uh, in this video we are uh, trying to understand uh, the bending of a cyclist while taking a turn all of us have experienced that that when you are uh, when you are on a bicycle and uh, you are uh, taking a turn uh, you bend inwards right uh, what is the reason we do that that is something which we are going to look at in this uh, video so um, let us look at a diagram of a bicycle right okay here it is so we have a bicycle which is on this particular road right and uh, what we are seeing thinking is that this particular bicycle is taking a turn along this road right and it is taking a turn along this particular curve which has got radius r this is r so it is taking a turn along a circular path which has got radius r uh, mass of the system is m that means the mass of the cycle as well as the cyclist uh, v is the speed with which the cycle is moving and r is the radius of the circular path as we saw right. what are the forces that come into play uh, let us look at the forces if this particular point g is the center of gravity of this system then at this particular point mg is acting in the downward direction and here where the cycle the wheel of the cycle comes in contact with the road the normal reaction acts this is the normal reaction to the mg and both of them are along the same line of action right apart from this since the cycle is taking a turn centripetal force has to come in play and that centripetal force is provided by the frictional force f this is frictional force f which is equal to the centripetal force provided to to help the car uh, help the bicycle take the turn and the centripetal force uh, is equal to the frictional force f is equal to mb square by r which we know is the uh, formula for finding out the centripetal force mb square by r okay so uh, this is the situation and the question that we are trying to address here is uh, why does the cyclist tend to fall out outwards when he takes a turn without bending uh, we have experienced that that when we try to negotiate this turn without bending uh, that means we are erect over here uh, and without we are not bending inwards we have a tendency to fall outwards why does that happen that is something which we are going to look at in this particular video to explain that let, let me first take a very very simple example let me let, let us take a very simple example let us see let us say this is a situation where we have this surface on which there is a uh, there is a wooden block let us say this is a wooden block lying on maybe a table and this is g the center of gravity of this particular block and it is at let us say height h from the ground the center of gravity is at h from the ground now imagine if we apply a force at bot at the bottom over here say for example we apply force to this block over here in this particular direction we apply the force f what do you think would happen uh, it's easy to understand that when you apply force over here in effect what you're doing is you're trying to pull this particular block by applying a force over here this block will have a tendency to fall in this direction so we may have a situation wherein this particular block tends to fall in this particular way so it tends to move in this particular day because you have applied a force and this force has been applied at, at distance h from the center of gravity so in effect you have applied a torque right a torque a force has been applied at some distance from the center of gravity so you have applied a torque and that torque causes this particular block to turn in this particular direction something very similar happens over here as we can see there are three forces mg r and f now mg and r are cancelling out each other because they are acting on the same line the only force that remains is f right and this particular force f is acting at distance h from the center of gravity so if i take this particular line and then i can call this as distance h so this is distance h so the frictional force f or the centripetal force is acting at a distance h from the center of gravity and therefore it applies a torque on this and this torque gets applied in this particular direction it's a clockwise torque right as i'm sure you can imagine this this force is applied in this direction the center of gravity is over here so there's a torque applied in this direction and this torque's magnitude is the force f into h 
So torque of magnitude F into H gets applied, which pushes the cyclist in this particular direction. And therefore, the cyclist has a tendency to fall on the right hand side. I hope this has helped you understand why the cyclist tends to fall outwards when he's trying to take a turn and is not bending inwards. Right? Now let us look at as to why does the cyclist uh, bend inwards or what happens exactly when the cyclist bend inwards. So let's once again draw the same diagram. <coughs> so let me get some space over here. So let us say this is the road. And now the cyclist is bending inward. So the wheel of the bicycle would be something like this. And this is how this is how the bicycle would look like since it's bending at an angle. And let us say it is bending at an angle theta. So this is angle theta over here through which it is bending. This angle is theta. Okay. So the forces that come into play are again the same. So I will show over here G which is the center of gravity and at the center of gravity we have force Mg. Here we have normal reaction R. Let us call this point A. This is point G. And of course we have the frictional force F acting in this direction. Uh, don't uh, worry about the length of these vectors signs. Actually, they should ha I have shown over here a smaller uh, length of the vector. Here I have shown a larger vector, but the magnitudes are same. So uh, this is just to help me draw the diagram in a better way. I have uh, used different lengths, but mg over here and mg over here would be same. And similarly, r would be same. So mm, don't worry about the lengths. Okay, so this is mg and this is r and this is frictional force f or centripetal force f acting over here. Now, in this case, what happens? We will still have the uh, torque, uh, which is still uh, the torque provided by frictional force f. So, let me again show the same torque which we discussed earlier. So, this is distance h. And this particular force f is applying the torque on this system in the clockwise direction. So again, I'll show that as a clockwise torque acting in this particular direction. Right? So it is acting in this direction, right? But now there is a change. In the previous case, as we saw over here, Mg and R were along the same line. So they were not applying a torque. But now Mg and R are not on the same line of action. There's some distance between them. And let us call this distance. This is the distance between as G and R. So let us call this distance as X. So therefore what happens is the force R is being applied at a distance X from the center of gravity right, over here and therefore this force R provides a torque in this particular direction. Since it is on the right hand side of G it applies a torque in this particular direction. Right. I hope you are able to get this R into X and the magnitude of this would be R into X. Right? Whereas here this, this torque was F into H. Right? So we have now a counter torque R into X for this F into H and therefore they cancel out each other and therefore the bicycle is able to remain uh, steady and it doesn't fall this way or that way. Uh, this is how by bending the cyclist produces a counter torque to F into H and prevents himself or avoids falling on the right hand side. So what I get is mathematically speaking, I get equation F into H is equal to R into X. These are the two torques, the two torques which are equal. If I draw a free body diagram of this situation, I'll get something like this. Uh, let me draw it over here. Okay, let this be the let this be the road. And this is the bicycle which is bending right, at an angle theta. So this is angle theta. This is this is G, and this is mg. Here we have R. This is point A, right? And of course, on this side we have the frictional force. 
the frictional force F. And uh, this distance, where do I show it? Mm, this distance. I hope I don't go out of the page. Yeah. This distance is H. This is H. And uh, this distance. There is a distance between G and R. This is distance is X. Okay, so this is how the forces are acting. The three forces R, F and Mg at location. And this is how the cycle has been. If this is theta, I can very well say this angle is also theta. So, what will be sine theta? Sine theta will be opposite side that is X upon hypotenuse. Let me call the hypotenuse as GA. This is GA. And what will be cos theta? Cos theta will be H upon GA. Theta is this. Cos theta will be adjacent side. This is H. This distance is H upon G hypotenuse. Therefore, I get x is equal to g a sin theta and h is equal to g a cos theta sorry the earlier one was x is equal to g a sin theta and h is equal to g a cos theta and <coughs> if i put this in the equation f into h is equal to r into x right if i put these values over here i get f into g a into cos theta is equal to mm, R R into X X is G A into sine theta. So I can see that G A G will get cancelled, and I'll get F cos theta is equal to R sine theta. Right. Therefore, tan theta is equal to F upon R. Right. Okay. Let me come over here now so that I am able to complete this on this particular page. So tan theta is F by R. F we know is mv square by R and R is mg. Right? Okay, just for your reference, we have seen over here F is mv square by R and uh, uh, R is equal to mg. Right? So this gives me tan theta is equal to v square upon Rg v square upon rg and this is the formula that we are trying to get to tan theta is equal to v square by rg uh, this is a very important formula for this particular situation and let us try to analyze this formula what does this mean tan theta is v square upon rg and what it this means is that if the speed of the vehicle increases tan theta would increase or tan theta should increase if the cyclist increases speed tan theta should increase that would mean theta should increase and that's understandable. If the cyclist is moving with a larger speed, he needs to bend more so that he doesn't topple over. Right? So, if V increases, theta should increase. If V increases, theta should increase. Right? That means if the cyclist drives with a larger velocity, he should bend more. Right? And if R decreases, then theta should increase because r is inversely proportional and that is also quite understandable right if r decreases then theta should increase r, r, r decreases means that uh, the meaning of r decreases that we are taking a, a sharper turn sharper turn right the meaning of r decreases is a sharper turn for example let me attempt if i am able to show it to you over here right supposing uh, let me get this up here let, let us see. Yes. Supposing I take this as the center of a circle, I put it over here and I draw a circle. So, what I have got over here is a curve. A curve over here. And as you can see over here, this is not a sharp turn. This is nearly, nearly straight. But if I decrease R, what happens? I am getting a sharper turn. Supposing I decrease R, I will get something like this which is more, uh, which is sharper than this. And if I decrease it further, right, if I decrease it further, supposing I take a curve over here, 
and you can very clearly see the difference that the curvature has increased. I hope I get still, I'm able to get a still shot, shot of gun. Yes, let us see. Yes. And this is still sharp, uh, sharper. Turn. So what it means is that if R decreases, that means if the cyclist is taking a sharp turn, then theta should increase. That means he should bend more, right? Uh, and that is what we see in actual life, that if you're taking a sharp turn, then you're expected to bend more uh, towards the in, towards the center of the circle so that you don't uh, fall over. Uh, okay, uh, I hope uh, this has given you some idea about why a cyclist bends uh, while taking a turn and it has also given you some idea about uh, the physics and the forces that are involved in this. Uh, thank you.